when people have invested so much emotional and mental and uh, mental energy into um, let me say into a certain target and when that target is not around anymore all that energy they've invested and all that that waste they've generated towards a target is now going to affect them let me explain this okay let's say you live in a neighborhood and you let's say you have immigrants and those immigrants have children so you have an immigrant population around but the, the immigrants are different than the native population so the native population doesn't really want the immigrants around despite the fact that it's the immigrants that are doing the jobs that the natives don't want to do so they need those immigrants and this is something they don't want to acknowledge so now people have pain because of the reality that they don't want to want to admit so now they begin to discriminate against those immigrants and consequently many of the immigrants are on welfare or they are unemployed their children are also in criminality most of them so now you have in the streets a lot of those small youth gangs that are terrorizing the neighborhood well this problem is an historic outworking of at least two generations probably three so this is something the descendants need to take responsibility for because they're the ones perpetrating the past but people don't want to go there why because look at this you have all this investment against that immigrant group against the target group and because of that investment there is stability in a sense that whenever there is waste energy or frustration it's it's channeled towards the immigrants and because of that people become blind towards the real cause of the issue which is them holding on to the past and it's because people holding on to the past that they generate this kinship towards one another for example if your wife cheats on you or you notice that your wife is cheating well you're so op occupied with being against those immigrants that you simply you you'll forget about it and your so-called marriage continues now, i'm not this this may be a very weak example but nevertheless i'm giving it because as long as the targeted group or individual is around the investment is worth it let's say that the there's a new government there's a new parliament and they want to clean the streets they bring military police and they capture those youth those youth thugs and put them in detention centers and also many of the immigrants are forced to leave what happens now you might think oh there's a relief finally people will say those thugs aren't terrorizing streets anymore but hold on a minute all the time when those youth thugs when they were babies while growing up they received negative energy negative attention from the environment and that negative energy contrib contributed to how they become of course there is their own will that's involved but if you don't have much to choose from then there, you don't really have a choice but those others that maintained the historic pattern they had the choice to give up but then they but they didn't want they didn't want to do that so there's this whole investment against the group you have all this energy this waste energy that's floating towards the group once the target is gone that energy is going to stream around the community and then people go into because they don't have a distraction anymore now they're going to notice all the other ugly things that they didn't want to notice before so the guy that has a cheating wife now becomes so upset that he begins to beat his wife and now we have other things developing throughout the community so in order to minimize violence throughout the community they have this targeted group the scapegoat and the scapegoat is there to minimize harm throughout the community and in the process they are the ones suffering the harm they are kept alive by the leaders of that community just to for the purpose to receive all the bad energies of that community now why am i speaking about this 
you need to look at things from the big picture. Often people look at the small picture, that's their own feelings, their own, their own interpretations, and they try to understand their environment and what's going on with their own interpretations. Well, in the world they, they would say good luck, in a sarcastic way, to tell you that it's not going to work. And indeed, that's not going to work. Look at the big picture. You will never understand the full picture because you don't have all the information, but you can look at the big picture and see what's going on. Why do you think that there are ghettos and streets that are dangerous, but the politicians aren't doing anything against it? They have the police power, they have the military police, but besides they also have the ability, they have millions of dollars or millions of euros, they can start new projects and create jobs. So that people can have jobs, so that they are not on the streets anymore. Many of such things are possible, but they are not doing it. Why? Because they have the knowledge, they have the historic knowledge, that without a targeted group, things, uh, things are, are going to escalate. And um, the people in that community, they are often not aware of this. And some are aware of the scapegoating pattern, but they also are aware that the alternative is very scary. So, this is what you need to understand when it comes to you individually. When you are facing um, attacks, but you're the target of envy, jealousy, it isn't just you, okay? Because look, even if you had an ugly trait with you, that does not justify what they're doing to you. You know why? Because they're the ones who, they're the ones with the bad energies. They're the ones that are open to demons now, and they're the ones that are perpetrating the danger over and over again. So they're the ones in danger. But because there's a channel towards you, they won't notice it because all the danger is flowing to, towards you. The moment you're out of the picture, they're left with all that waste, and that waste is not going to affect all, all people around them. Look, as I mentioned before, the videos I'm making, or the recordings I'm making from now on are all summaries and repetitions through illustrations. Okay? I may have said this before, but understand this. Jealousy and envy are parts they are a part of the his historic blueprint that's perpetrated generation after generation. And in every country or province or town there may be another blueprint. But just understand this. Most people will, they will either remain at the blueprint in which they are born, or they may join another blueprint. So, and when they join another blueprint, it seems as if they've changed. They didn't change. They're still, they're still in bondage. They're still stuck. There are only, uh, there's only a minority of people on the earth that are free. Understand this. So don't learn something like this. A lot of the people that are stuck at the blueprint, they're not even aware they're stuck at the blueprint. And even if they became aware of the blueprint, they would uh, push it away. So, whatever is going on around you, or whenever you are the target of, of pain of others, there is something big, bigger behind it. Because you are part of a wall, you are part of the big picture. So only looking at it through an on an individual scale is nonsense. That's why, why when you are praying, pray for insight, pray for understanding, pray to re for things to be revealed unto you. Because most of the time, you are just a distraction from something else that's going on that people don't want to face. It can be that, um, I just was using a, just a random example, okay. it can be that in a country, um, the food supply is scarce because of mismanagement by some ministry in the parliament. Now this is a huge scandal. Lots of money have been wasted 
uh, in the agricultural sector and now there's a f uh, shortage of food supply throughout the country. And because the prices are going to rise, because food needs to be imported from other places. Now, when this comes out, it's going to cause an enormous outrage. So instead of that, now you have people dressing as clowns and scaring people. So all the attention of the people around are going to those scary clowns, those creepy clowns. And without them noticing is the prices of the uh, uh, in supermarkets are rising. But within a year that the prices rose, people didn't even notice the prices rose during that year because they were so distracted by the clowns that were scaring people. And indeed there were clowns scaring people. And the the fright that people ex experienced was real also. But now they still are not aware of the shortage of food supply. If someone would tell them, look folks, there's a shortage of food, food supply in this country, everyone would look at that individual and say, you are a crazy conspiracy theorist. You need to learn to separate fact from fiction. You need, you need to go to psychologist. And the, the, the individual keeps saying, look, here's the evidence. People don't, don't even want to look at the evidence because they will say, look, we go to the supermarket often, we go to the restaurants, there's plenty of food over here. Then we begin to ask them, why did the price rose? Um, about one year and a half back, you would pay 70 cents for a stack of apples. Now you pay 2, two euros 80. And most people, because they have labeled you as crazy, they don't want to admit that you said something factual, so they will just pretend they never heard it. But there are people going to think, hold on a minute, this is true. And now some people are going to think, hold on a minute, why didn't I notice this? Why didn't anyone notice that the price of food rose like that, like this? And then people are woken up. Hold on a minute. If prices are rising, that means that there's, 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 few, there's few of that product around. Or it needs to be imported, and because of that it becomes more expensive. So now we're going to think, maybe there is a food shortage indeed. Of course, a lot of people are now going to think, okay, if there's a food shortage, then why didn't the media and the state speak about it? And then think they're going to discover there's far more going on, and most people don't want to go there. So they will hold on to that the guy or the woman that said there's a food shortage, that, that he or she is crazy. And, and okay, maybe it's not something political. Maybe it's not something big like that. It can be just that, for example, you have a husband and a wife, they're married, and the husband has emotional issues because he has abandonment issues that, that he developed during his youth. He was severely traumatized as a child, and he's violent now, but he doesn't want to face that his parents are wicked. He doesn't want to face that his parents are greed, harm upon him. He doesn't want to face that. He still wants to see his parents as loving parents. So all that tension he has on the inside is now leaking out as physical violence. And he's aware of it, but he doesn't want to... F but he's so addicted with seeing his parents as loving people, and he's so addicted with um, getting sympathy from others, because he often becomes upset with someone else. He starts problems, and he also pretends to be the victim, and throughout his lifetime, people would give him sympathy, and he's addicted to it. Now, he's married, and his wife is seeing all of that, and his wife's making clear, you need to change this. But after the wife becomes his target of his pain. And now, the wife, because she doesn't want to divorce, because she doesn't want people to talk behind her back, ooh, she has divorced, what happened? She doesn't want to go through that, so she wants to remain married. So, she, she, she now begins to complain about one of the children, and now the husband's rage is against one that child all the time that's going on and now you have other siblings in that household that see what's going on and they don't want to admit it so now they they don't want to admit what's going on with their parents so now they're now going against a sibling also and now one of those siblings that is joining the crime he is at school now and he begins to pick to bully someone else 
and because he picks and bullies someone else, all the attention goes to the tar that target. Now what's going on? That kid in school that's bullied, he is the distraction of that sibling. He is now the, the distraction of what's going on in that house, in that family. He's not even aware of what's going on in the house, in that family, of all that's going on over there. But it's now leaking out towards him. So understand, whenever, whenever things are going on, look at the big picture. And even when things are going easy, look at the big picture. Because just because things are going easy, that doesn't mean that things are alright. Well, that's all I wanted to say in this video. Remain vigilant. Don't become paranoid. Just be alert. That being said, you all be at peace. And shalom.